This is exercise 5-4, Applying Constraints. I'm in I Constraints Revit file. I'm going to open the main floor plan. I'm going to select the interior wall located between door 25 and 26. So this interior wall. You're going to see that the temporary dimension here has become visible. I'm going to uh, left click on the permanent dimension toggle to convert those dimensions into permanent dimensions. Now my permanent dimensions are actually associated with something a little bit different from what we see here in the book, so I'm going to move my witness line, it looks like, to the center of the walls. Oh, not that wall. The center of the wall here and the center of the wall here. Actually, let me try that one more time. Okay, make that permanent. Sorry about that. I'm going to move this to the center of the wall here. Move this to the center of the wall here. There we go. And those look like the dimensions in the textbook. I'm going to left click anywhere in the display, so just get out of that command or hit modify or escape. I'm going to scroll down until I see underlay. And I want to set the underlay to ground floor plan. All right, so what that's going to do is going to show the walls that are on the ground floor plan. And see, they came up with this gray type uh, line weight in here. Note that the upper wall here, these walls, they are not aligned. So we, we definitely want to align some walls so that the floor plans are onto one on top of each other. So we're going to activate the Modify ribbon, and we're going to use the Align tool. And we're going to set the preference to wall faces on the options bar. We're going to select the right side of the ground floor interior wall. So this is the right side of the ground floor interior wall as the source for the alignment. And then we are going to select the right side of the main floor interior wall as the target for alignment. So the right side of the main. And we're going to see that the wall moves. Now, a warning appears and it says the insert conflicts with the joined wall. Well, that's because the wall is in the middle of a door. <laughs> All right, we just want to ignore this warning. We're not going to move that right now. We're we're just going to keep that there. We're going to lock this alignment. Then we're going to right click or hit modify to get out of that command. And then we're going to activate the ground floor plan view. We're going to select the wall, the cabinets, and the copier next to the wall. So we have to find this. And then if you hold control down, you can select other objects. See, so there's a little plus next to my mouse. So we're selecting all those objects. And then we're going to select the Move tool on the Modify ribbon. And we are going to select a base point, and we're going to move the elements to the right 1 foot 11 inches. And then we're going to hit Enter, and then I'll slide all that over. We're going to left click or hit Escape to deselect those objects and we're going to activate the main floor plan. All right. Note that the main floor interior walls has also shifted, but the walls remain aligned because they are locked together and the dimension has updated. Okay, so the system walls have shifted. All right, and then at the bottom part of this, it goes through explaining how the three types of constraints that Revit uses. And I want you to read through that so that you understand those because those will be brought up again in the following exercises. So we just use the align command. We've learned about underlay. You can turn the underlay off if you no longer want to see that ground floor plan anymore. Um, but the underlay is great for trying to make sure things are aligned.